you didn't know any better, you'd think it was summer. Unbelievable. The last last home game of the year. Walking out there today like it's like uh, first weekend of September. It's beautiful. gorgeous, beautiful, delectable day out there. It's going to be perfect Saturday. Is it? Yeah, like 50s. I mean, this time of year. Oh, you take that. Yeah. Stealing like, it. Stealing like days. Stealing days. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys remember that time we played Pitt in late November. Field was frozen. That was a little cold. Yeah, I saw six Eskimos walk out. Bummed out. Too cold. cold that night. Too cold. Hey, everybody. Welcome in. It's three guys before the game. Episode 505. And for the very first time. For the very first time. In Big 12 membership, it's the Cincinnati preview of West Virginia. And we talked about this. This is not the renewal of a rivalry. It's the renewal of a team you used to play. It could be a rivalry. It can be. It can grow into one. Yeah, Sat- can, Coach it, Satterfield said it could be a rivalry. Oh, yeah, it can grow into one. But right now, we had uh, talked to the radio analyst at the uh, Cincinnati Network last night. Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. He said... You know, we played 20 times. West Virginia's won 16. So you can't be a rivalry if the series is 16-3-1, which is what it is. So maybe you do grow a rivalry. But in order to have a rivalry, stupid stuff has to happen. Like crazy stuff has to happen that leaves a scar for people. That's how rivalries, you know, something happens. Uh, something always happens. Something. I, I remember Nippet sta- Stadium Nippert. fondly. And yeah. what I say? Nippet. That's what I said. Same, same thing. Nippet, said. Nippet in the bud. That was a that was a massive win in the Rich Rod era. Hit the goal, hit the cross, mm-hmm. the goalpost, yeah. hit the post. In, in need of a win, needed oh. to kind of jumpstart the thing. A lot of people think that might have been the one to kick you into gear there. Was that, guy, was that kicker's name Jonathan Ruffin? <laughs> that might be right. I think it is. That's really Jonathan well Ruffin hit yeah. the hit the hit the upright. Three guys before the also game. Also a horrifically blown re- replay review in that game. The Isaiah Peed was was, yeah. was not in. No, or fumbled whatever. Garrett Green was in last Saturday before Isaiah Peed was in. Three guys brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. That was his name, Jonathan Ruffin. Thank you. Excellent, Tony. Yeah. Don't don't ask me what I ate two nights ago. Now you can forget. Now you can forget it. Yeah. Make space. Riches. Well, I will talk about that. Three guys also brought to us by GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Get your GoMart Rewards card. Triple points Tuesdays and Saturdays. Gomart gets really busy this time of year. Really, really busy. Deer hunting. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah uh, sure. you, you, don't think, you don't think the hunters might make a stop or two at the old Gomart on their way in? Um, get some uh, Vienna I'm, sausages. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the first thing they go for. Yeah, that's a, you, have to, you have to. That's Vienna, state state come, law. Comes with a Vienna sausage on that. <laughs> I, talk, never, I mean, that's... Canned meat. I mean, that's. I understand what it is. Well, well versed. I mean, it's it's. A, I'm sure you sold them at your dad's store. Sure, we. It's the cousin of spam. Yeah. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com where they've got that Avalon Tritune boat on special. Three guys special going on right now. It's absolutely fantastic. Talk to you about that. Three guys also brought to us by the Conley CPA Group. Providing value way beyond the numbers. Way beyond. You know what else they provide? Lasagna. You all had a nice lunch today. Mm-hmm. With the nice. Conley folks, right? I mean, the Conley folks came in. Mike was here. Sam was here. Kevin was here. And they said, they brought, say, hey, you mind if we bring you a, a lasagna from out there at Muriel's? And we said, you know what? Name the time. You just, <laughs> you just bring it. That's and, the way to lock down a meeting. That's yeah. not all, though. Yeah, not all. No, so uh, we can cut not the camera all. here, Luke. And so... Uh, not only do they bring the lasagna, so uh, Mike's wife, Samantha, mm. um, Are she, you gonna make, open those? she makes these cookies. That don't spill them because I'm eating them <laughs> later. Don't spill them. Well, don't right. touch them. Just hold them up. There. Illegal. Move them over. They're illegal in like 15 states <laughs> because they're too good. Addictive. <laughs> Really like are good. these are the only cookies. Like there should say, like warning. Surgeon General says if you eat too many of these, you're you're just Super unbelievable. Good. Open negotiations to sell them in the Three Guys store potentially. Episode eight hundred dot com. Say again. We open negotiations with them to see if we could sell them in the Three Guys store. Episode eight hundred dot com. Oh 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 okay. Sell the cookies. They're that good. I don't know if she wants to make that commitment. Yeah. I mean, it probably opens up a whole other thing too. What? Well, like what? 
If you're going to sell food or something, I mean, that's probably. So he's always got to be he's just like, you are the biggest Debbie Downer. I mean, just like always got to just pee on everyone's good ideas. I mean, you just never I thought of just raising legitimate concerns. Look, you sit over there and go, hey, we'll sell cookies on the website. And Brad's over there breaking out in hives. He's the guy that had to run interference on the tailgate event. And then Dave had to do the work. And you're just like, hey, guess what? Why don't you say we'll give away airplane tickets? I mean, just just make up stuff. I'll give you an airplane ticket one way. (laughs) Oh, all right, coming up on the show, textual healing. Um, we'll get a bunch of stuff going there. And uh, also, what else do I have? Uh, well, oh, yeah. So we're recording a little bit after noon, 4 o'clock Eastern today. The Three Guys Holiday Store, store <laughs> the Three Guys Holiday Store opens. We'll show you the featured items. It's 4 o'clock Eastern, the actual time? Yes. That's a specific time. It's set to launch. Three o'clock. We call central. it a. We call it a, in the business. We call it a drop. Are the Christmas catalogs out? Well, there's they still may be in the mail. Okay. Yeah, they still may be in the mail. <laughs> so uh, anyway, if you don't have a Christmas catalog yet, you can go to the episode 800.com website, and we've got a. We'll show you all that stuff. It's like Harry and David. Is that what it's, it's very so similar? But like? <laughs> well, the only thing we don't have that Harry and David does are those pairs. I'll tell you what. <laughs> You get some of those pairs from Harry and David, oh, yeah. like invariably every year, like somebody will send me those Harry and David pairs and there might be like, I don't know how they come, like nine or 12. I mean, when I start and they're ripe, they're ready to go. Yeah. You just go. I mean, there is no question I can eat four of those and once it just drop oh, four down. You are a big pear guy. Oh, I love them. Yeah. I got, I got about a half dozen at home right now in a brown bag trying to get them ripe. Pear but pears have, they're one of those things, they got about... A 36 oh, yeah. hour window. Short window. Right. Yes. You know? Yes. Very so you good. You have to check them peri- like periodically. And when it's ready, you just got to go. <laughs> you attack. It doesn't matter the time of day or night, you're exactly- whether you just ate or you're going to eat, you got to eat it right then. Just like when there you were. There's no leeway on that. Back in August, early September, when you were in Africa. Yeah. And you were on that safari. Yeah. And you saw like when it was time to eat for one of those animals, it's like. Time to go. It's time. It's, it's time, time to show go. Time. Yeah. Speaking of showtime. Our first 2.30 game of the season, Saturday, as West Virginia closes the year. And as I said that, Kerchival's brow did a big frown because I think, I know that myself and Hoppy are sharing the same opinion. I don't know exactly where the senator stands on this, but I am putting a flag into the air and calling this a beware upset alert game. I've either convinced myself or it's true, one of the two. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree. We were talking just a little bit in show prep, which was about 20 seconds before we went on the air. But, but no, I agree with you. Here's what worries me. You know, out, We don't know what's going on in the, in the push car center, but after the embarrassing loss to Oklahoma, it was, well, okay, you finished with two wins, and it, okay, you win the next two, and don't worry, you beat Cincinnati. But, I mean, almost like it was assumed. And what have we learned, Brad, about this league? What have we learned is that there's a lot of equity, equality in this league. Teams beat other teams all the time, and you cannot presume uh, of what's going to happen. And I think this is a semi, it's not a, it's just kind of a semi trap. I think West Virginia, who knows how they respond? They're coming off playing their worst game of the year, granted opponent adjusted but their worst game of the year Cincinnati got their first conference win you hear the coach you're talking about hey finally things are coming together you know the run game is there so they they're playing with some confidence I I think this is a worrisome game for West Virginia concerned Kerchival concerned Kerchival Senator well, there's some matchup things that concern you, and I'd, I'd probably come off more concerned except hearing him go off there that it's an automatic loss. So I'll try and bring some balance back that. on here. This, one thing this team has done very well this year, it's bounced back from adversity. It's been able to right the ship and get back on track, especially at home. I know the Oklahoma State late turned into something a little bit different, but I think this team gets well this week. I think it comes out, it has success oh, really? moving good. the football. I think the offense rebounds. The The defense is going to have a challenge. It's going to face a running game. We're going to get into that in a minute. It's going to face an elite running game here and a quarterback that's every bit of Garrett Green running the football when he wants. So there's some specific things you're going to have to take advantage. But, yes, this matchup, this isn't a just roll out and, and play and win. Um, there's, there's going to be some challenges here, no question. This game will detect and determine 
and reveal the soul of the WVU football team. It will be revealed. These next two. This one, well, I'm just one at a time. Because okay. you know me, I just want to go one. I don't even know who we play next week, Hop, because I just play one game at a time. <laughs> anyway, can't wait for Waco. Anyway, it will reveal who you are, to your point. They had their most embarrassing loss of the season. No ifs, ands, or buts. And now they return home for the one last time. The crowd will not be as big as it normally is because students are gone and it's hunting season. So just by nature, you're not going to have as many people there. You're going to have to bring it. If they come out and play at their level of efficiency that they have displayed at times this season, they win the football game. If it's less than that, they put themselves in the crosshairs, to use a hunting analogy, they put themselves in the crosshair to get surprised, to Brad's point, and he's going to get into stats here in just a second. Um, the one thing that you might go, you, the one thing you may know before we started breaking this down is, hey, you know, Cincinnati lost seven in a row. Cincinnati, they didn't win until last week in league. Yeah. But they also have the second best running attack in the league. And it's really, really good. And as you said, always have to be careful. you much rather play the Statue of Liberty as your quarterback, someone that just goes back and stands there and that you could pick off, right? Just like stand back there and whack them. Well, this cat moves. And so you don't know what C.J. Donaldson's status is. You don't know what Doug Nestor's status is. So this is going to have to be a self-motivated performance by the Mountaineers, which makes the start of the game, the first quarter, massively important. If you bring it and you have your energy, you're probably in good shape. If you, are a, if you lag and are laggard and you're, you're committing penalties and you turn the ball over early on in the game, doot, doot, be careful. I'm really interested to see what Spread Zone Stats has because when I just looked at the, at the macro stats – uh, it, they look pretty similar. I mean, mm-hmm. there wasn't yeah. what, what a lot of difference in, in the overall stats. You would not, Brad, if you didn't know the records, you'd look at these stats and say, well, they must have pretty similar records. Yeah, it, and, and that's the thing. I mean, I know everybody loses their mind when you come out and say you got a challenge from a team that's during seven, and, and I'm going to say the cliche that comes with that. I think they're better than their record indicates. Yeah. They've had some close games. They, they just, they've had turnover problems. They've had red zone problems that have, that have switched games. West Virginia's been very good at what? turnovers and red zones. I mean, that changes you from a six win team to a three win team. So you've got to, yeah, you're going to have to play. Here's, let me just give you, this isn't the spreads on stats. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Are you going off script? What are you doing? I'm going to bonus you a stat because we just talked about the quarterbacks able to run it. Coming into this game, Emory Jones leads the big 12 in quarterback rushing yards. Excuse me? Emory Jones leads the quarter, the big 12 in quarterback rushing yards. Garrett Green is third. Emory Jones leads the big 12 in quarterback rushing attempts. Green is third. So you're getting two quarterbacks yeah. that can run it, will run it, have to run it for both teams. So you want an early key? Which quarterback runs it better? <laughs> there you go. And what happens when you have to play a team has running quarterback problems? It's tough. Well, yeah. Both ways. They're yeah. saying the same thing. They're saying the same thing over here going, oh, no, i got to get this off, and Gary Green's going to take off and run it. But, you know, also that, that running back, Kiner, I mean, he's got it going now too. I mean, he's almost – he's like 100 yards away from 1,000 yards, yep. Yep. coming off a very solid performance. And – uh Coach uh, Satterfield was talking about that, said Kiner's really come into his own. And he said he's not a breakaway speed guy, but he's a tough guy, tough guy to bring down, breaks tackles, gets yards. And what did he have um, against Houston? I mean, a buck something. Yeah. He's, like you said, he's, he's realistically within 1,000 yards. Yeah. So, to the quarterback question, really important game for Garrett Green. Mm-hmm. It, was his, it was his poorest game of the season. How does he bounce back? Does that shake him confidence-wise, or does he does he ball out? It'll be really interesting because that tells you a lot about him as well. My guess is it's the latter. My guess is, oh, yeah? Okay, fine. Yeah, I didn't play well. Here it comes. That's what you better get. You better get that. If you've got um, lingering impact from what happened there last Saturday – not good. He, of course, is far from alone, though. He can't, he can't do that alone. If the guys up front don't perform better as well, 
then you're in big trouble all the way around. I don't care what Garrett's thinking. Those guys up front have to get back to dominating. And listen, they're going to get that's going to be a great matchup to watch. That interior of the West Virginia offensive line against the interior of the Cincinnati defensive line, that's Huge. big boy on big boy right yep. there. So you've got some really fun game within the game matchups here. You're going to have to take advantage of Cincinnati's young corners. Can you do that? Can you run it enough to back them up so they don't know what's coming and then attack those young corners that they have? That's that's where the game's going to be decided. But the every position group has to play better than Oklahoma obviously but those up front guys they they can't get owned like they did in Oklahoma yeah if you I know when you watch the game most of the time we follow the ball okay but if you're going to go back and watch the game after the game's over then watch their nose guard and West Virginia's Zach Frazier so their nose guard is Dante Corleone don't put the d in there like the godfather it's not Corleone it's Corleone Dante Corleone he is a dude. He is a future NFL stud, preseason All-American. Watch him against Zach Frazier because you've got two of the best players in the country at their respective positions, and they'll play right over the top oftentimes of each other. So watch that one, and if you can watch during the game, watch that. And if not, go back and watch it afterward and see how that looks. So that is going to be a big, big key. <clears throat> so – Turnovers. They uh, Cincinnati forced three turnovers against Houston. Yeah. Um, they. Uh, hey, on the rivalry, th- we were talking about rivalry, right? Yeah. You call, you calling it a rivalry? No, not yet, but has the potential to be. You know, and and um, a game with benefits. Is that what you're calling this? Scott Satterfield called it that as well. He says this will be a natural rivalry going forward in the Big Twelve. I mean, they're they're happy. He's right. Have, yeah. He's right. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah. Closest opponent you have. But you don't. You don't have to worry now on rivalry week. You don't have to go 9,000 miles to Ames and try and force a rivalry week in there. You know, there, well, clearly. Well, Ames is. Or, Air, or Arizona or Utah, for that matter. Ames is closer than Orlando. But that tells me. But not as close as Cincinnati. Well, that tells me that Cincinnati is, I mean, they bounced around conferences, so they're happy to be in the Big 12, I'm sure, that they're looking for that, too. Sure. You know, they're looking for a rivalry, too. Yeah. So it, it takes two. Mm-hmm. Right, you can't go to Iowa State and say you're our rival. They'll go, well, you know, you're not really. I mean, but welcome in. I mean, so it you got to have them. Too. Yeah, so I, hear, I think I think you have the chance here. Your your point is 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 well accepted and well taken. However, I think it'll be difficult for Mountaineer fans to embrace. It's it's going to be hard for them to fully accept Cincinnati as a rival. Because in their heart of hearts, they know the traditional rivals are Pitt, Virginia Tech, Maryland, Penn State, although Penn State doesn't consider West Virginia a rival. But those are the foundational, those are the, like, those are the ones you were born with. And so to adopt another one in, it takes, I think it takes, now you got a better chance of Cincinnati becoming a rival than Iowa State. Yeah, yes. and, and the other thing, I mean, people, all those teams you just named aren't played on a regular basis. They're right. not in the conference. This is going to be different. First well, you time, know, we don't play these guys all, every year. That new schedule that four came out. Four out of five, I know that. I think that changes eventually. But the first time West Virginia plays over there, and there's a ton of Mountaineer fans in oh, there, that, yeah. that's, that's what will start. I think there'll be some good number of Cincinnati fans here today. Maybe the record keeps some of them down. That's going to be the game. That's going to be a heavily attended game mm-hmm. moving forward because it's the only one you can get to easily in this league. Don't disagree. Probably not many road trips to Utah when you play out there. Probably not. Um, I mean, our guy that takes the train, though, they might take that out there. That'd be a nice train have, trip. Have we heard from him this year? Early, didn't we? Remember him? Yeah. Hoppy, the guy from Pennsylvania. Yeah, he got just on the over train, the never heard from him again. Took the train was to that Austin. The, was that this year or last year? He went was, to Austin. That was, was the last year. Yeah. I mean, he's, gone, he's gone radio silent on us. Certainly hope it wasn't might, might have already started on the way out to Utah to get there next year for the game. Certainly wasn't, hope it wasn't anything we said. That's never happened. You need to go and, and – well, fine. You two are poo-pooing it. I'm glad Cincinnati's in the league. I didn't I'll say, say I wasn't. You two who are against that? it. You don't like it. You don't like them being here. I'm, welcome. I'm glad they're in the league. What? Who Bring said it on that? in. I like Cincinnati in the league. Liked playing them before. What? Liked going what over show there. Are you liked on? taking the bus trip when we take the bus trips. To? I don't know what you guys are coming from. I like it. Glad they're in the league. <laughs> yeah, Hoppy. I, I, Three guys before the game is brought to us by Comax Business about. Systems. Comax is folks. You guys are over there poo-pooing it. 
Those I'm folks not, are unbelievable. You know how it's a, not sure just, it's a rivalry. I just said I it's a potential rivalry. I don't know if they're game, close. I don't know if it's a rivalry. Listen, I'm, Hop, I'm in. Let's listen, go. if you need to tell more people, Hop, whether you need one digital line or a thousand digital lines to tell people that Cincinnati, that you're happy that Cincinnati's in the league, then go to Comax Business System because they'll do a digital Added 32 phone system. teams from time zones 16 hours away, and you don't like the school that's closest to you. I, I can't help you. Him too. Wait, no, I no. I, both of wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. I want. I never said that. I'm all for it. Add some more that are closer here. Teams in Alaska. Comax's, Comax's digital phone Morocco. systems are competitively priced, efficient. Ultimately, they you save Ohio your team. business money. You can call Comax. They'll come in with a free price quote for your digital phone systems and so much more. Whether it's business equipment, they'll come in. Remote monitoring of your IT. They got it all. Comax Business Systems. 25-plus years in business here from the great state of West Virginia. So here's the funny part of what just happened. What? You fell for his third grade. Like, he just, he just like, ooh, hey, Hoppy, you want this strawberry? Whoa, I didn't take a strawberry. You just bit into it. He's gacking. I was falsely accused. Eh, he was just playing with you. You bowed into it, so it made his day. So now he's had a happy day that he made you lose your oh, mind. Oh, he is over there. He's happy. He's <laughs> happy. <laughs> Guess what I did? Hoppy got upset. <laughs> He'll come out of the – he'll come – like later tonight when we go down and do sports line, yeah. he'll walk in, he'll put his papers down over there and go, how about me getting hoppy today? <laughs> That's what it's going to be. You ready to do your thing? Let's go. Is it good? It's good. It, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff here, but you better strap in. I really want to hear What this. is that? Well, you really better strap do. in. There's only two regular season games left, so we're, uh, we're entering, emptying the cupboard. Good. Hit it! I'll bring it. So I check the numbers. We'll just go right to the numbers. Here comes a heater. Let's jump into the uh, analytics portion of the show. Ready? Five, four, three, two. Spreads on Stats is brought to us by the wonderful people from the Conley CPA Group. And they do provide so much value beyond the numbers. And food. And food, yeah. <laughs> See? Like value what? beyond the numbers. <laughs> like what, like what, like what you say? Well, let's let's look at this aspect of it. COVID changed our lives forever, right? Yes. Changed everything forever for so many different reasons. Well, in the accounting business, it also changed things where now, oftentimes, it makes so much sense nowadays to have your CFO services outsourced. And that's what Conley CPA Group does among the many, many things. So if you're a business owner and you just kind of get inundated or you're just about done tired chasing after CFOs, they come in, they lock hands, and they can outsource that for you remotely, and it just takes it takes a uh, anvil off your head. Yes. It takes the anvil off your head. Now, the last time I saw an anvil on someone's head was in a cartoon, and it did not feel or look comfortable at all. I mean, who but, wouldn't want the anvil removed from your head? Thank you. You right? can't even do that on cartoons these yeah, days. exactly right. So Conley CPA or Group. exploding cigar. One of the money, many, many services that they provide and the outsourcing of your CFO services, West Virginia people taking care of West Virginia nice folks. clients. Nice. It was nice to meet them. It was today. very nice. They were a little afraid to meet you. They well, have, you guys fill them, you know. Don't say you guys. Don't just unnecessarily Did you attack have my me back? when Did you, you don't have know. my back. I went in the room. I, all I said was this. Hey, when Hoppy comes, make sure you don't make direct eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, we had a nice. I mean, if nice you would have been on time, you could have had your own back. Yeah. We did. We were staring at the clock in here. We we're showing them around the studio and go, look, 1230. Where's our boy? See? Probably wasn't good on yours. But anyway, Senator. You ready? So you say these are really good. Yeah, we might have to break it up a little bit because there's heavy there's heavy numbers coming well, at you go. here. I'm ready. I'm you ready? Big boy, yeah. Hoppy, you Bring ready? it. Bring it. I'm listening. Anxious. My glasses on here as we get ready yes. to dive into the spreads on stats. Cincinnati preview for West Virginia's biggest rival. <laughs> So here's question one. We begin with the same question we have each week. I think it's especially relevant this week. Is West Virginia going to be able to slow down that running attack? Yep. Right? If Cincinnati's running on you, look out. you got problems. If you can get them into that passing down situation again, I think that's where the advantages really come in for West Virginia. You're getting a team in Cincinnati that's fourth in the Big 12 in interceptions, just 11th in EPA when it comes to the pass. So it's a team that doesn't want to throw it. They've struggled at times. So can you make them throw it? 
Can you get pressure on the quarterback when they do throw it, right? Because that's the key. Slow this run game down enough so that they've got to get into obvious passing situations, and then you come at them. A couple numbers that we've gone through every week this season, we'll continue to look at these. For Cincinnati, the right tackle has allowed the second most pressures in the Big 12, and the center has given up the ninth most. Can you come from that area? They have four players in the top 30 of most pressures allowed. Four players in the top 30. Conversely, yeah. West Virginia has none in the top 30. That tells you how good that offensive line has been for West Virginia. Bartlett and Martin are the two guys to watch coming from the left side if right tackles the area that you've got to come through. Bartlett 11th, Martin 17th in pressures from the left side. Those are numbers that we've updated going along. So you're going to see both quarterbacks from Cincinnati. They're going to play two, but it's Emory Jones that takes the bulk of the snaps. I think if he stays in there and you have to make him throw and you can get a little pressure, I think you've got a chance to get a pick or two, which would be massive, right? This is, to me, this is a similar game plan to UCF, right? UCF wanted to run it. And when they threw it, what happened? You were able to get turnovers and that changed that Mm -hmm. game because you weren't having a lot of success slowing them down via the run. Wouldn't that be kind of neat maybe if for senior day, Beanie Bishop or Malachi Ruffin uh, get a pick six, bring one back to the house? Well, that'd be a whole nother level. I'll just take a pick, but a pick six would be fantastic. So when you look at when you look at Jones per PFF, he has just eight big time throws and 12 turnover worthy plays. That has turned into 10 actual interceptions. Now, here's what you want to keep an eye on, Hoppy. You ready? Yes. Keep an eye on the middle of the field when Emory Jones drops back to pass. Eight of his 10 interceptions have come down the middle. But conversely, so have nine of his 15 touchdown passes. So the middle of the field is where they want to attack. That's where he can be picked off. But you better get there because they can also score from that area. Uh, Senator, if I'm not mistaken, last week, didn't you tell us that West Virginia is one of the best teams in the uh, league and guarding the seam route? Correct. So that kind of plays into West Virginia's strength. Negative pick right in that little seam route there. All right, you, so want to, you want to go ahead and call it no, now? I did, I'm just saying watch the middle of the field. Very important part of the action coming up on Saturday. Like most quarterbacks, Jones really struggles when he's pressured. Just a 44 PFF grade when under pressure, averaging just 4.4 yards per attempt in those situations, only has one big-time throw when he's under pressure. Now, again, you got to watch out for him taking off scrambling on you when you're under pressure, but get after him when he has to pass. I think good things happen. Here's the other part that comes with Cincinnati. When they run it well, that really kicks in their play action, and they love to play action you, which makes some sense for good running teams, right? 11 of 15 touchdown passes from Jones have come off play action, and he only has three interceptions in those situations. That yards per attempt number jumps from 4.4 yards under pressure, which isn't very much, obviously, all the way up to 9.2 when coming off play action. So the running game is not only just going to help the obvious, the running game, it's also going to help their pass game significantly. It's a big difference when they can operate out of play action or not. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's that pressure. West Virginia's got to get pressure defensively. You're off to a good start. Let's flip over to the offensive side. We mentioned the running quarterback battle, the game within the game there. Garrett's going to have to have a big game with his legs here. And I know that's true for every West Virginia game, except for BYU when they didn't need to run him. They're going to need to run him this week, and West Virginia is going to have to have him to be productive on the ground. So let's look at some numbers. Hop, you ready to dive in here? Yes. Last week versus Houston, the Cougar quarterback Donovan Smith ran for 88 yards and averaged 6.8 yards per carry against the Cincinnati defense. He was Houston's leading rusher and had 63% of their rushing yards. Houston as a team averaged six yards rushing for the game. Now, Houston wanted to throw it a lot, didn't get them the win, but their quarterback had success running it. Green enters this game third in the Big 12 in quarterback rushing yards with 467. He averages 5.8 yards per carry and has the second fewest stuffs among quarterbacks in the Big 12. Yeah, it gets out of harm's way. He does. Okay, you with me, Hop, so far? Yes. All right. We also know that West Virginia likes him to have the ball in his hands in big moments, third downs and or near the end zone when you're down inside the five-yard line. Green is second in the league in rushing touchdowns by a quarterback and leads in first downs gained. So he's going to get the ball in those situations. Now, you really want to get into the weeds? We're going way down here. Oh, yeah. Bringing it out. Only two games left. So this is from my friends over at Sports Info Solutions. Garrett leads the Big 12 quarterbacks in rush attempts, Yards rushing and first downs gained going off tackle to the right. Kerchival, off tackle 
to the right has been very successful, better than any other quarterback in the league. So keep an eye on that. We normally talk about this team being left-handed a lot. And Doug Nestor might not go, so Nick Malone is going to have to be the yeoman there. Get over there and clear it, which is fine. He played against BYU, started on the right side. They went for 210 yards over Nick, on the right-hand side. Nick's had a great year. So it, it goes either way. Brad, is that because that that's where the opening is or because he's right-handed? So he's right-handed, so... Sure, yes. that helps. Yes. But remember, a lot of quarterbacks in this league are right-handed, and he still has the best in all those categories. So, yeah, that's a lot of the reason, but he's been very successful at it. So Garrett's legs are going to be a big success in this win. I'm sure the next question you want to ask me is how Cincinnati's run defense against a quarterback running? Was that the next question? Exactly what I was going to ask, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking. Cincinnati is 12th out of 14 Big 12 teams when it comes to opponent rushing yards, opponent quarterback rushing yards. I like that number. Bearcats have given up the fifth most rushing first downs to quarterbacks. I like that. And they have the most missed tackles on opposing quarterbacks. Yeah, that's a cycle right there. Yeah, so that's going to be important. And, And... Add to that, the status of C.J. Donaldson is unclear for this game. You mentioned Nestor, but Donaldson's status is unclear. Last time we saw him, he was limping off that field, trying to work on his balance on that on that leg over on the sideline. So if you don't see Donaldson, that becomes even more important for Garrett Green to have a big game. Those are good numbers. There also, you go. yeah, yeah. You know, are your numbers more comprehensive now that we're almost at the end of the season, Brad? Got a lot of them. In fact, today, full disclosure, I had to get up and walk away from the computer. Huh? Because I thought that was getting a little lengthy. I've got a bunch more to but get But you up. know what? I, th- my, my takeaway from what you just said is that Garrett Green, who's coming off his, by the coach's admission, his worst game of the year, that Garrett Green needs to get back to being Garrett Green. And that probably, that yes. also means running the football, getting a big third down play, running when there's nothing there, and being a huge offensive factor in yeah. this game. Uh, and I think he is, and I think he has to be. When West Virginia's clicking and winning and scoring points, he's having great games, right? Those games that we've seen like that, we're sitting there saying, hey, look at Garrett Green, look at that deep ball, look at that pass, look at that run. Oh, my gosh, he just took off on third and nine and got a first down. So, yeah, I think you've got to be back to to he's got to drive the bus offensively with help from those guys up front clearing a path. And getting some stops on Emory Jones and don't let him beat you. Yeah, because that's the other part of this, guys, and I didn't get into it here, but West Virginia doesn't have great numbers against running quarterbacks either. We'll talk more about that coming up later, but that that's going to be a challenge. That's the matchup here, guys. It's two teams that want to run it and are very good at running it. You mentioned – they're Big 12 numbers that they're second in the league behind West Virginia. But if you go nationally across all games, Cincinnati is actually fourth in the country in rushing yards per game. West Virginia is seventh. So this team's been successful. The wins haven't followed, but it can run it against another team that wants to run it with two guys at quarterback that also want to run it. I think that, may, that might be your best. That might be his best performance this season right there, Hoppy. It's very strong. Very strong. Good job. And running quarterbacks, ground game. 1947. I kind of like that off off the right tackle. Hey, by the way. Quarterback rushing. Watch that's off the right tackle. That's a nice one. You know what I loved last week? Love, because you know I like crazy, stupid sports stuff. 32 straight runs by Michigan. I know, 32. Like, to me, just made me laugh inside. 32 straight runs. Love it. Remember when Pitt came into West Virginia and ran the ball, what? Yeah, didn't throw it. Right? The whole game? or Yeah, I think it might have been the whole game. Marino was hurt. Yeah. So they just, yeah, didn't throw it. Yeah, I that was it. a wild stat. I love that. That's the ultimate. Just, we're going to run it. You guys want to try and stop it? Hey, guess what? We're going to run it's it again. That's, That's an ultimate tweak of that the is, yeah. that is Hey, that is the ultimate. Um, you got thanks. our signal? You you think you got our signals? We got your signal? We're going to just run it right at yeah, you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, that is a thanks for yeah, having Yeah, thanks for having us. Spreads on stats brought to us by the... Conley CPA group. I've told you before that all the other accountants that I know get all nervous and flustered when deadlines for tax How many season come. Do you know? A lot. I matter of fact, mine constantly is calling me and saying, Hey, need to see and bring your checkbook. Anyway, um <laughs> and they're always flustered and nervous. Not these people. I thought they I mean, they're confident when they eat, they're confident when they do your work. <laughs> It's the Conley CPA group providing you value beyond the numbers. If you're a business owner, oftentimes, especially small er businesses, they get into business, they don't realize the mass of work that has to go on from that standpoint of the numbers side of it. And they'll come in and do everything from A to Z when it comes to accounting, consulting. It's the Conley CPA group. And great cookies. Yeah. If they like if they add the cookies on 
might become, uh, I guess well, there's a big four now, they might become one of the big five <laughs> in the county. You know, it used to be the big eight hoppy, then it went down to the big six, now it's the big four. They'd probably go to big five status. Probably. With the, with Samantha's cookies. Um, as I said earlier on, the weather's absolutely delightful, which reminds you that boating season, yeah, it might be over here in the state of West Virginia for the season, but you can get the greatest deal going into the off season in boating, at least here in West Virginia. Now, you could put this thing onto a trailer and bring it down, but right now, Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans offering the Avalon 2385 Entertainer. Look at that bad boy. Top of the line, tri-tune model, can be used for anything you want to do out there. Six lighted speakers, 150 horsepower uh, Honda motor and trailer, and it's just got everything that you would need. Be that guy or be that girl on the water with that super special from Lou Wendell Marine Sales, the same folks that provide all the boats that you see on James Bond movies that are pontoons. It's Lou Wendell Marine Sales. Unconfirmed. All right. If you do go in for the special, just tell me you're a three guys listener and you got that bad boy at 89774. That's 89774. Music time. Hit it, boys. All right, what are y'all thinking? What are y'all feeling? Do y'all need some healing? It's time. It's textual healing on Three Guys Before the Game, which is brought to us by Episode800.com. By the time you're hearing this, our three guys, Christmas Holiday Shop Catalog Coffee Table Edition will be available digitally on our website. So here's where we go. Uh, Producer Luke, let's go ahead and start showing these items. First off, a new item for the holiday season. It is um, this unbelievable coffee. Uh, from Mountaineer uh, Roasters. Look at this. Our guy, Rusty. <laughs> Look, Look at this. this. It's called Game Day Grind, and I had that this morning. So coffee, if you do it properly, you're going to hit your bloom peak at between 198 and 203 degrees. So what I do is I get it there, and then I let it sit for just a little bit. I think when this coffee comes down to about 180, it is just, it's just like, Gorgeous, just beautiful. So that is now available um, on the website and also at Rusty's location here in Morgantown, mm-hmm. Mountaineer Roasters. And uh, that's a really a special Christmas blend called Game Day Grind. Also, uh, a couple shows ago, I wondered out loud, and I get chastised a lot of times for asking, hey, why can't we do this? Well, I spoke this into existence. Our uh, fine folks at Mountaineer Popcorn um, out of Shepherdstown, look at this. They've created a three guys brand. It's called Mountaineer Munch. That is chocolate popcorn drizzled with peanut butter. If you're watching lower right corner, that's the family that owns it. And uh, it's there in Shepherdstown, Hoppy, not far away where you grew up in Charles, uh, Charlestown. Know, I know exactly where it is. So it's, it's great. It's Mountaineer Popcorn, and that is our three guys Christmas special. It is chocolate drizzled in peanut butter, which is never a bad thing. That would also, be good. Yeah, yeah also making its good. way onto our Christmas shopping list. For you, uh, three guys listeners, how about the, it's a great day to be a Mountaineer, bourbon barrel. This is made by the folks at Bearwood. That is an actual bourbon barrel top. So sometimes you struggle to size-wise. So just think of an actual bourbon barrel. And it says, as you can see there, it's a, it's a great day to be a Mountaineer, wherever you may be. Um, those are limited. So a couple of things. The popcorn, they make it fresh weekly, 10-day lead time on your popcorn. And the bourbon barrel... There's only going to be 50 of those, 50 exclusive lids. Expect a 10-day lead time on that as well. Where do they come from? Bearwood, a West Virginia company. Oh, Bearwood, okay. Yeah, they, they've got a location here in Morgantown, plus they're down in the Valley area too. To ensure delivery before December the 25th, please place your order by December 10, and we will do our absolute best to provide five-star customer service. Dave does a great job with customer service find out about that okay last item and those are super nice but this one is even neater so we're partnering with wvu's cancer institute they've got a program called growing hope 
And what it does is this. They've got a farm in Fairmont that they work with called the Homestead Farm. And they obviously farm it and grow vegetables and fruits and things like that. And what they do is they employ and provide life skills to individuals with disabilities and gives them, you know, meaningful opportunities to grow the food, sustain the program. So the food that they grow is then provided to the patients with families that receive treatment at WVU's cancer center. And they they need additional meal assistance. So what they do is they take the food that they grow at the homestead farm and they create specially curated meal packs that will nourish a family of four with 100 of these packs distributed weekly. The program's initial pledge aims to positively impact up to 400 individuals this year. So they'll give them this food once a week. It'll feed four so they can do 400 people. So what we're doing is we've created the Hope Apparel Collection. So that's a few of the items. So what we're going to do is take portions of the profits from the sale of those items, and we will donate those to the program. Great cause. It's a win-win. That's nice. Mm-hmm. That's nice design. So that's too. nice like stuff that. there. That, ha- that The pink stuff's really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and go back to the other one there, uh, Luke. And that stuff's cool, too. Mm-hmm. And that could, that, I mean, if you even don't even know what the program is and you just see the word hope and you got the state outside, state outline in there, that's, that's really good. and that's neat. Yeah, it looks really good. Very nice. Now, of course, all the, the staples are still available at episode800.com, too. Quarter zip you're wearing, shirt I have, yeah, we don't efforting have any, T-shirts. We don't, we, don't, we don't have staples on there. No, not like staples. office supply stuff? Standard stuff. Oh, efforting yeah, t-shirt. yeah, Thanks yeah, for yeah, having yeah, a shirt. Sure, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like staples. I thought you were up on lingo. Yeah. yeah. No, all that other stuff's it's there. The three guys office supplies. Three guys having us. So, yeah. Well, pencil sharpener. Episode 800.com. We should do that. <laughs> all right. Ready for textual healing? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Just received this. Tony, time for you to step up your game. Look at that. 23 West Virginia counties have now reported feral hog sightings. Uh-oh. How about that? That is a big pig right there. He's awake, too. Yeah. So is that now an invasive species? I don't know, but he looks—he doesn't look happy. I mean, I don't think that. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything because I don't know. Yeah, don't say anything because you get that—you get those people all fired up. They don't stop. Yeah. Uh, Chris Lawrence will be over there knocking on your door. Yeah. Hey, three guys. Mike from Salem checking in with a heater alert. Wow. This is not directed at three guys, but instead of the texters that are bringing heat and not putting a name to it, it doesn't sit right with me. Back in Wyoming County. We call attacks with such anonymity and heat. We use a different term, if not acceptable, sackless. Yeah, I get it as a fan base. We got knocked in the teeth. But popping off at Brad, Hoppy, and Tony for just trying to break down what happened and perhaps give a moment's respite isn't a good look. Once again, this is Mike from Salem. From Salem, who will put his name on the text. So uh, before the game last Saturday, I had to get a little bite to eat, you know. Yeah. And so I went over to this place called Torchy's Tacos. Oh, I know, I know of Torchy's. You know of Torchy's, right? Because yeah. they're down in Texas. They're down oh, in Texas, yeah. too. Yes. So I'm walking out. I met this fellow here at the bar. Mm. And his name is Dylan. Okay. And he was from Buchanan. And he said, I was just listening to the three guys because the night before, he was in Fort Worth and went to the rodeo. Oh. And he said, we were just listening, driving up here from uh, Fort Worth to uh, Norman. So on his way to Oklahoma. He was, he listening, was listening to the three guys. So there That's you go, nice. Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. Shout out to you. Thank you very much. Texter, Brad, Tony, and the Hopster. My wife asked me to provide her with a Christmas list for her family. When I provided her the link for the efforting and thanks for having us shirt, she replied, you will not be allowed to wear them out of the house. What? How should I handle this situation signed by Brandon in Herndon, Virginia? Interesting uh, question there. How do you handle that? Divorce. (laughs) <laughs> there you go again. Just get right down to the root of the problem. Yeah, those are not going to be worn out of the house. Why, why wouldn't she want to wear that? I don't know. Brandon, we're strongly with you. That's perfect. Wear that into I church on I, Sunday. It's perfect. Efforting. I, that'd be a perfect. good church. That would be a it's good church. for church. Efforting. That'd be a great church shirt. Yeah, right. yeah, you're always efforting on yeah. that front. I mean. Yeah, very good. I, mean, I, I like that. super appropriate out of the house. Yeah, because we're all sinners. Right, Hop? Right, absolutely. We're all so you're walking to church. You're constantly in effort. Efforting. 
sometimes more than others. I think the comeback is, honey, this is really important to me. How about that? Can you start there? Why don't you start there? Good start, yeah. Uh, Texture. Response, maybe important to you, but it's stupid. That's what you're going to get. Uh, Texas says, I know we're, we're supposed to be getting on to Cincinnati. I can't quite get over Oklahoma. After the wins this season, you guys often praise the staff for making the right adjustments and chastise some of us non-climb believers for lacking faith. But to use Hoppy's term, those games are an aberration. When this staff plays against inferior G5 talent, they can win. But so far in Neil's tenure, wins against comparable teams are the aberration, not the norm. The fact is the poor performance against Oklahoma happens more times than a competitive one. So please stop acting like we're surprised when Neil hooks a shot into the cart shack instead of hitting it down the middle. He is who he is. I was just surprised they got that they played as bad as they did and got beat as bad as they did uh, in that game. Did not see that. I, I, yeah, I mean, that's what the aberration. Nobody aber- saw that This did. year, that's been the aberration. They have yeah. not had games like that. Yeah. So time to regroup. Texter, I almost didn't listen to the recap of Oklahoma because I figured there would be a lot of haters. But as my wife is fond of saying, I couldn't take the pressure. So I listened Monday. Appreciate your voices of reason. I think more folks should have Matt from Tulsa's attitude. I left West Virginia in 1970 and one for 10 years in the Air Force, following the Mountaineers as best I could, defending Eastern football. Those were lean years in the late 70s. I returned in 81, season ticket holder thereafter for 30 years. I took great joy in watching them play, both in person and on TV. One of my best trips, Sugar Bowl, Florida, 94, not a good result, but what a ride. I think folks lose sight of the fact that these guys are 18, 19, 20, 21. I know there's big money involved, all that too. Would like us to be relevant. I'm sad when we lose, frustrated at times, but I get over it because for the most part, these kids are fun to watch. They're good kids. We'll have our ups and downs, but it'll be a fun ride. I just hope the Jimbo to Morgantown talk doesn't start because that grass isn't always greener. Thanks, three guys, for entertaining us, providing us with facts. Like Hoppy, I hope Coach Brown stays because I think he's a good man. However it plays out, I'll still enjoy the ride with these kids. Let's go get us some bear cat and bear skins. Dink from Bridgeport. Thank you. Texter. I got a lot of um, got a lot Fisher. of tech got a lot got a lot of Jimbo Fisher texts. That's, that's predictable. Week. I think that's uh, got a lot of Jimbo Fisher texts. Um, my stance on that is this: as I said in August, let's cook the soup and let the soup be finished before we need to do anything. Let the season happen. Okay, you're sitting here right now with two to go. And at this point, three of your four losses are against ranked teams and one absolute against Houston. See what it ends up. I I agree. And that's when the evaluation will be made by the AD. However, as the as the way the season has evolved and maybe we saw this coming, these last two games are enormous. Ginormous, as have every game been before this. Pitt was enormous. TC, that, I mean, that's that's the way it, it works out. It, it is. It's just as the season goes on and you get near the end of the season, then you have fewer chances. If you stumble, you have fewer chances to get it right. Okay? So, so each game actually takes on maybe a little bit more importance in terms of determining what kind of season. I don't happens. know. You'd lose that Pitt game. It would have been, it would have been a different tenor. That was well, a, there, that, well, yeah. There, well, there weren't many important games as that one to get off on the right track. I would agree on the Pitt game. Uh, the next text was extremely long, so I shortened it. The gist of it's still there. What's up, three guys? WV sports are more than sports. Let me tell you how. I come from a legacy of Mountaineers. My family settled in Kingwood back in the 30s, 40s from Italy, part of many immigrants who worked in the coal mines. My dad instantly fell in love for the Mountaineers. One of my earliest memories, my dad going to see Rich Rod's first game against BC. I was seven. This coming Friday, the 17th, I turn 30. Guess where I'm going? Mountaineers against Cincinnati. With my family, including my wife and my brother's fiance, both of which we met at WVU. I wouldn't have it any other way. 
We'll be cheering loud and proud. We'll certainly be singing country roads to the end of the game. I hope you can understand how West Virginia sports about more than a game to us. They're deep family ties. They're our family's Christmas. Oh, absolutely. Totally get it. Texter, three guys, two things. My wife's due date is the day after the Cincinnati game. So that'd be Sunday. It'd be their first child. Mm. If she hasn't given birth by then, should we attend the game and possibly be the first birth inside gotcha. Milan Pushkar Stadium? Hard no. No. Except I love the hospital w- is just, <laughs> you know, I mean, just you can walk over there, I guess. I love WVU and our fans and get the frustration, but if you aren't happy with a year when we're predicted not to go to a bowl and possibly get eight or nine wins, then I don't know what to tell you. I want the Pat White years back more than anyone. It's really hard to be that good. That's why we remember them finally and want them back. We'll have our time in the sun again. College sports are cyclical for most programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I probably wouldn't go to the game if she's due. No. Plus, I mean, how miserable would she be? I don't know. Sit on a bench and <laughs> yeah. Text her. I texted three weeks ago, imploring my fellow Mountaineers to enjoy football season. It's a fun and exciting time of the year. As I listened to Sunday's episode, my mind went to Hoppy saying in response to my text, "The nature of fandom is emotional. That's a fair and valid point. Still, as much as I hated losing by 39 to Oklahoma." I like the idea this team could finish 8-4, and four, return almost everyone next year. Let's see where it goes. The comic relief of listening to folks moan and complain in Sunday's textual healing segment was a helpful salve after Saturday night's mauling. My mind went to poor Ellen Griswold being caught smoking by her mother from the other room in Christmas vacation. To borrow her exasperated words and apply them to Mountaineer fans, it's football season, and we're all in misery. Go Mountaineers, signed by Jay and Asheville. North Carolina. Jay Suffering. Texter, I don't understand the people who are talking about the weak strength of schedule. For at least the next few years, the Big 12 looks to be extremely flat, which is what a team like West Virginia wants. Similar resources across the board. Also, I'm holding a Colorado over four and a half win ticket, which after the first few weeks, I didn't think I'd have Mm -hmm. to sweat. I'm not looking good, brother. Who they have left, you know? I'm going to check on that. Can you all remember another regular season college football game where both coaches got fired after it was over? So he's talking about Mississippi State and Texas A&M. Yeah. I can't. Regular season, he said. I don't know. I don't that's know. that's a, a good question. That's a still kind of a relatively newish phenomenon, too. No, that's true, too. That didn't used to happen like it does now. Texter, as I'm listening to episode 504, Mountaineer fans complain about being 8-4, and 7-5. and five. Let's calm down. Remember when those records were West Virginia's norm, 8-4, and 7-5. and five. Records become, for WVU, 10-2, and 11-1 and one occasionally. That's not mediocrity. That's where our team lies in the tiers of national football. This is the first team I've seen in the Neal era that even remotely had a shot to win games, and I think the season will continue to show that. I know it's long, and Tony may not read it, but I feel better getting this off my chest. Thanks, guys, for the show. Grant in Red House. Colorado is at Washington State and then at Utah. Not easy. Eh, probably not. Probably not. Which is that maybe why you don't uh, assume what happens in week one or two will continue all the way through the season, good or bad? Probably not. Probably shouldn't jump to – Crown national champions and coach of the year candidates and giant extensions. Shouldn't. Probably wait till things play out and see how the would. season goes. Or should I you would. just rush in and put all resources behind something that's real shiny after the first couple of weeks? I would probably. Well, knowing me, I'd probably panic, though. Like the second weekend, fire the coach, hire the coach, give him a raise, fire him. I'd do something. Crazy. Winning's hard, man. Winning's hard. It Redo hard. the whole roster becomes even harder. Dr. Hard. Dr. Jeff in Charleston writes, my WVU glass is half full. Of Kirchevale. Yay. Eight and four would far exceed most of our expectations. Even seven and five is better than ending up in 14th place in the league. P.S. What is the origin or the definition of boat raced? So we used boat raced uh, several times Sunday on the show. So West Virginia got boat raced. Well, actually, Dr. Jeff, 
Uh, boat raced, according to the Urban Dictionary, is defined as to be beaten very badly at something, especially in a fashion that you were behind from the start and never had a chance. Comes from the boat race, an annual rowing competition between Oxford and Cambridge, in which the first side to get ahead can then move over to the middle of the river where the current is faster and is almost never overtaken thereafter. So that is you jump ahead early, you never look back. That's why we call it a boat race. Interesting origin for that. Sure. Texter. On ESPN Plus this weekend, by the way. What's that? The boat race? Boat race. It's not. I just wanted to say ESPN Plus. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's a high-tension day for you, huh, Senator? Saturday, you just struggle a little bit? No, if everything works as it should, we'll just turn it on and it'll operate smoothly. Certainly. <laughs> It'll be tight. Certainly <laughs> hope that happens for you. Uh, Texter, I'm wondering if Stats or Fine Looking Phil has an optimal blend of cotton, polyester, spandex blend that they would recommend for workouts. You guys offer that at all? Cotton can get a little heavy. Spandex, you got to be certain. So what would you say? People, I, I'm, I'm polyester almost exclusively for workout. Really? Yeah. You don't do any of the spandex stuff? Not usually. Is that a wicking material? Polyester? Yeah. What a good wool sweater. Probably not. <laughs> a big, 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 big shawl. Big wool shawl. Texter, hey, three guys, this, weekend's, this weekend's game. The sweatpants have certainly changed a lot, haven't they? Oh, the, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you go from what the Rocky Balboas. Remember when Rocky was working out there? The gray. The grays. with the, that, was a, that was a gray that, like, you could use that for soundproofing. Like, you could hang that over windows. <laughs> you wouldn't hear a sound. So that material is what? What? Rocky also went towel inside the sweatshirt. Yeah. Around the neck. Yeah. But that was the real gray sweat pant material. Like, they couldn't. It makes you stop breathing. Like, you look at that material nowadays compared to what, like, they put out now. Like, it makes you like, ah, I got to go get a breath. That's heavy. Yeah. Well, he needed that. He went into the meat cooler. He's punching the meat. He needed to stay a little warm. You go in there with something a little bit light, he could have caught a cold. <laughs> hey, three guys, think weekend's games uh, will be interesting in my house. The f- wife's family is all from Cincinnati. We're going to have 13 Bearcats staying in our house and going to the game. My wife was raised as a bear cat, but has lived in Morgantown, cheering on West Virginia for a few years. She's a bit unsure who to root for. Any advice for interacting with the enemy when they're inside friendly territory? I suppose I'll make grandma's chili spaghetti to try to win them over. A little Cincinnati chili. I don't. So let's talk about that a little bit. Cincinnati chili? The spaghetti with the chili? Yeah, that's a big thing there. And you like that. Oh, Really? And load that all that cheese on there. In. Onions. Out. out. In. Out a hundred percent. Way in. Out. Um oh, this was written, by the way, from grad student Josh, who just successfully defended his master's thesis. Congratulations. Congratulations. Outstanding. Now, Hoppy, did you have to defend your thing when you got that honorary degree out there? It's up in your office. It, t- it took me so long they were just here, fine, please. Leave. We gotta clear. We have to clear the. We have to clear the books on this one. <laughs> Texter. Oh, here we go. Charlie from Midlothian. Oh, gas stealer himself. Tony, Brad, and Hoppy. The three of you make three guys in episode eight hundred the outstanding podcast and promotion of West Virginia that they are. But like any successful endeavor, there are also people behind the scenes that contribute to its success. I had an issue with one of my purchases from episode800.com. This past Sunday, I sent an email with pictures describing the issue to Tony and Dave. Wasn't sure if Tony would respond, since he probably now has 75,000 unread emails. But Super Dave responded almost immediately, assured me that he would make it right. Although I have already thanked him, I thought it would be appropriate that he get a shout-out on the podcast. Right. Dave's amazing. But we, I mean, we do the best. Don't have seventy-five thousand, Charlie, on the uh, unread emails. Have fifty thousand, fifty-three thousand, one forty-six on yours. Yeah, two hundred eighty-five messages and five hundred eighty phone calls. 
I'm fine. I mean, I'm, life's going swimmingly for me. I mean, I'm not missing anything. Texter, I just returned home from my trip to the Isle of Carousel. Carousel. That's in the Southern Caribbean with my wife, <laughs> celebrating our fourth wedding anniversary. While there, we visited the original Blue Carousel Liquor Distillery close to our resort. As always, I wore my West Virginia T-shirt when walking around the property when a man and his family approached me and asked if I was from almost heaven. Come to find out he and his wife are from Wheeling. Of course they are. My hometown. Why wouldn't they be? And had moved across the country to California, but were planning on making the move back toward West Virginia this coming year. I guess it is true. There's always a West Virginia connection, even at the end of Davy Jones's locker. Shout out to my wife, Molly, who's a pick you RN at Ruby's New Children's Hospital, who bleeds the old gold and blue as hard as anyone. Love you. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So Curacao is in the ABC Islands. The Aruba. Aruba. Who's the B? And then Curacao. Let me check. But those three islands, they get like super great weather. That's like. The utopia of weather. Can't grow anything. I have, since you told me that, I have that on my phone now. I check it every day because you say it's always like Isn't 82 it degrees or you something. Look, do you look? Let's look at. Let's look right now at the. Let's look at the. Bonaire. 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 Very nice. So here's the here's the forecast. Been there. Been there. Have you? Sure. Okay. Sure. I have. Here, here's here's the Aruba here's the Aruba Just weather. Wait. Okay. I, I bet it's going to be windy and 82. Right now, it's 87. Oh, okay. So here's the next 10 days. 87, 87, 85, 84, 85, 85, 85, 84, 84, 84, 84, 84. 84. It's greatest weather ever. Some wonderful people in Bonaire. Really? Huh? What were you doing there? Visiting. <laughs> you have people there? This is where he keeps his offshore account. <laughs> All of his winnings. <laughs> yeah. All of his winnings, he keeps it in I do have a buddy that ran a book in Curacao. Well, sure, I know him too, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Texter. Professor Vinny here. So with everything going on with West Virginia athletics, I struggle to craft a text to the podcast. For instance, my head whirls with possibilities related to the Cincinnati game or the fact that Jimbo was let go by a and I thought about texting what might be the over-under on the number of texts you guys received related to him becoming our next head coach. My guess was 30 and a half. However, I come to you with a more pressing matter, that of Christmas music. A local radio station here in Chicago recently started playing Christmas music around the clock on 1 November. Not uncommon. My wife accordingly rolls her eyes whenever I put the station on in the car literally any time before December. So when, it, when is it too early to start listening to Christmas music? Myself, I'm ready for all things Christmas the day after Thanksgiving. 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 Uh, in relation, I can't wait to see what christmas theme merch you guys release. Might I suggest a three guys themed ugly Christmas sweater. A uh, hoppy thoughts on Christmas music as to when to start? I think programmatically you can start like any time now, frankly. I mean, because it, it is November one too early is the I question. I think it's too early. Okay. Saturday? I think no, November one's oh, too early. You hate music. What? You know my stance. I mean, do what you want to do. <laughs> he enjoys Christmas music in July, play it in July. Yeah. Why would don't take anybody else's opinion? Yeah. You want to you want to listen to it? Listen to it. Yeah, tell your do wife. What you want to do. Tell your wife to put some earbuds in. You're listening to the Christmas music. Don't tell people very, what to uh, do, Hoppy. Right, with very libertarian well, I mean, don't view. Don't tell people of what to music. do. You want to listen to Christmas music? Listen to Christmas music. Well, but just but that's enjoy. A, it's not that's harming a, that's anybody. That's a fair question. When do you think is true? I mean, Whenever you want to listen to it. Whenever you want to listen. Is the answer? Yeah, I'm with him on that. Whenever you want to listen to it. You think I would well, care when you tell me I could listen to Christmas music? No. No. But there's Whatever a, but you there's want, a, Professor Vinny, there, do what you want. There's a dispute in their household. That's all. His wife doesn't have to listen to it. Well, if they're in the car together. Well, he's driving. She can drive. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If Professor Vinny's biggest problem is you're bar they're barking about Christmas music, he's got a good thing going on. If that's their big concern. You know, good. usually when you argue about something like that, it's it's oh, you think really it's there's deeper issues. Oh, why are you fighting about Christmas music when, in fact, yeah. what it's really about is why don't you ever let me have my way or why don't you ever why oh, are you trying geez. to tell me what to do? All of a sudden, here, here's our boy over here. Guy Psycho wants to listen to Christmas music. On there. <laughs> All the guy wants to do is listen to Frosty Snowman, Rudolph Red-Nosed Reindeer, Hark the Herald Angels, and you're talking about the guy's got a divorce right. coming his way. Listen to what you want. Dave and Kaiser. I'm just trying to save a marriage. <laughs> 
Dave and Kaiser, I've been wondering lately why Neil Brown is so divisive to the fan base. It could be recency bias, but I don't remember this much vitriol aimed at past coaches. There have been message board and Twitter rumors that Neil wants out because his kids are being harassed. I sincerely hope it isn't true. I've seen my fair share of personal attacks toward him, but it would shock me and it would just make me feel sick. What do you guys think? Why do you guys think the fan base is so divisive? Just fan base is angst due to losses or it always been this way. Social media just brings it to light. I don't have any issues criticizing the coach's record, but obviously going after family ridiculous and egregious. So let me say this about all that. Let's do a historical perspective on this. I think your line that said, is this, has it always been like this or is social media just bringing it to light? I think there's your answer. Let's go back. Did Mountaineer fans want Bobby Bowden fired? Yes. Oh, yeah. They hung him in effigy. in effigy. Yes. Did they want Frank Signetti fired? Yes, they did. Did they want Don Nealon fired? Yes, they did. Multiple times. They flew, flew. airplanes mm-hmm. over the stadium repeatedly saying, fire Don Nealon. He'll be honored this weekend with his name enshrined. Hall of Fame. Pretty did, sure Bowden won some games, too. Bowden yeah. won to win games? Yeah. No. Did uh, did Mountaineer fans want to hang Rich Rodriguez when he left? Yeah, they did. Did they want Bill Stewart out? Yes, they did. Did they dislike Dana? Yes, they did. Do they like Neil? Eh, some do, some don't. Has anything changed? Absolutely not. Has the platform to dispense those comments gone about 50x or 100x from what it is used to be? Yes, nothing's changed. I Yeah, that that has changed significantly though and the ability to be anonymous on there and flamethrow is has gotten out of hand and I I agree with Dave here and it goes without saying but I'm going to say it anyway. Any, anybody going after any coach's family is ridiculous and egregious. Check check yourself if that's your I if str- that's your line. I strongly suspect that think about not just this situation, but if you are a if you are a, a fan and you want a new coach, okay, you, and you want the coach to be replaced, then in essence you're rooting for maybe not rooting, but then you want you want your idea to be reinforced. You want the team to lose. You want the team to lose. So when the team wins, it's not like oh maybe I was wrong and. It's going to be okay. You don't say anything. But when they lose and get whacked, you go, that, that, that reinforces your belief. See, I told you he should be fired. Therefore, he should be fired. So if you want the person to be fired, you actually are looking for an excuse to reinforce your argument that he or she is fired. Therefore, the losses, whether you're rooting for <laughs> against them or for them, the losses um, benefit your argument. Let's just, yeah, I'm with you. Let's just keep this in mind. This is the all-time closer to the argument. They hung Bobby Bowden, and they wanted Don Nealon fired. Two of the most successful coaches in the history of college football. That's all. So it's just part, unfortunately, it's just part of the deal. You're going to have a group. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it is. You're going to have a group that gets loud. That's what but, it is. But, but occasionally, you do have to fire the coach, okay? I wouldn't in this instance, but I'm saying that does happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so sometimes the, the complaints are very valid, and you got to fire the coach. Yeah. Uh, three guys, spirit of the West Virginia connection. Surprise, no one mentioned this on the broadcast. There was a lot of Kiki Tandy, Jacksonville State's leading scorer, Hopkinsville, Kentucky. That is former Mountaineer Keith Tandy's Cousin. Hmm. One of my favorite plays in Mountaineer history is Tandy nearly cutting Cincinnati receiver DJ Woods in half on a screen pass. I remember, I'm, I remember that. You remember you that remember hit? It? Remember that hit? You remember that? Oh. In front of the Mountaineer bench. He catches a screen in front of the Mountaineer bench, and Keith Tandy was laying in wait. It was one of those explosions, like where you see the helmet paint like go up in the air, and my man was... Would it be a penalty today? That's a good question. I don't know if he targeted him, but he just blew him up. Yeah. You know, that was from Reed in uh, in New Jersey. Hey, uh, before – are you done? 
Hoppy, the floor is always yours. Well, I just you mentioned it, but it, there's a there's an interesting kind of synchronicity to this game because West Virginia is playing Cincinnati. The first game at Milan Pushkar Stadium was Cincinnati back in 1980. West Virginia won that game. The head coach for West Virginia at that time, of course, was Don Nealon. Now Don Nealon's being brought back, and this is the Cincinnati game, and being honored in the diversified diversified energy, diver, um, yep, ring correct. of honor. And I actually think it's a little late, but I'm glad they finally got to it. But what a just what a remarkable career. Brad, I think he's the – I don't think – I. He is the patriarch of the modern era of Mountaineer sports. No doubt. Of Mountaineer, of Mountaineer football. No doubt. Got you going in this direction. Quite frankly, as we've said many times, the, the reason you were able to stay in Power 5, Power 4 football yeah. was because of the success that was laid primarily by him getting the thing yes. up and going. Laid yeah. that, made West Virginia a national power, played for national championship, and as we love in West Virginia, after he retired, stayed. Yeah. Stayed. Still here. No, you're exactly right. One of the best. And to your point, Brad, he legitimized West Virginia's brand to the point that it's still a Power 5 school. That's what he did. If the thing would have just gone down, the, you could have been Connecticut. And, and talk about, I mean, talk about a great decision because, you know, the, always the story is he was at Michigan and Bo Schimbecker was telling him, my God, don't take that job. <laughs> That's a terrible job. Brad, what did he do? And, and a different era, too, as we talk so often, if not only – him and how long he stayed and other jobs that he didn't take but that staff oh staying yeah together that that's right huge. that's the part that just doesn't happen now that that not only does the head coach stay for two decades but the majority of a staff stays mm -hmm. together like that so yeah. different era you yeah know? absolutely absolutely different era hey as we said uh earlier on with uh the deer hunting season starting and people traveling around whether you're coming to games or whatever it might be we uh, strongly encourage you to uh, check out GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart this weekend. If you do go to a GoMart store Saturday, you get triple the reward points. That's triple the reward points on Tuesdays and on Saturdays. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Three guys also brought to us by our great friends at Comax Business Systems. Comax Business Systems, they are West Virginia's big boys when it comes to keeping business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. Go for good times. Go for Comax Business Systems. See what I did there? Yes. Took the GoMart and made that Comax Business Systems. Visit mm -hmm. them. Um, business equipment, remote monitoring, IT services, they can do it all at Comax Business Systems. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. We've got a three-guy special there. Really encourage you to check that out. If you or someone you know is thinking about getting into a pontoon, a three-guy special on that Avalon 2385 Entertainer is outstanding. Tell them you're a three-guys listener to get the special. And lastly, by Conley CPA Group, providing value beyond the numbers, Conley CPA Group. And uh, great to meet those folks here today. And Emil, you, know, you, always, you do things from memories, right? You do them from memories. We got ourselves a memory. We had great food, great cookies. Great cookies. I mean, great Kevin, Kevin, Sam, Mike, they're all in, and uh, it was great to meet them. All right, we're done. Okay, we're back Sunday. We'll recap the Cincinnati game on Sunday. Mountaineer basketball next week, Monday, Wednesday. Baylor game to close out the regular season. We got a lot of stuff going on. Don't forget, Three Guys Christmas Store is open at episode800.com. Get some pears. Excuse me? What do you mean? <laughs> I, we're not, Order some pears. Now you got on me for trying to do cookies. I'm just trying to get fresh fruit. He just unveiled all, unveiled all kinds of new products, and now yeah. he wants pears. All right. We're good. See you all. Be good. Three guys before the game. 505, out. See you.